Hello everybody, my name is Eric Terramollins, and today we're going to be checking out Wonder Festival 2024 Summer Edition. Edition, Edition, Edition. So after going over all the figures that they've shown off at this super epic event, I've decided to share with you some of the highlights of what I saw and I thought were super cool. Some of these I'm super hyped about and some of them a little less so. I can be overly critical with a lot of things, I mean... I guess some of you know this from just watching my reviews. Where I can even be extremely harsh to some of the things I myself really love, I just try to be as objective as possible. Despite this, like everyone else, I am pretty biased, and I'm gonna be subjective in this video. So if I'm not vibing on a figure that maybe you really love, please don't take it the wrong way. Though it may totally be for you, it's just not for me, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, because it's always great to have different types of opinions and interests to keep things in life interesting. I'm going way off the rails here. Let's just check out the figures. And I guess we're starting off with something a little spicy, like Spice and Wolf by Katakawa. Um, you know, I tried watching Spice and Wolf, uh, the original series. I haven't even touched the newer one. I know there's a lot of people that are huge fans of it. I flipping love Monster Girls of all shapes, all sizes, all kinds, all colors, all everything. But I don't know if I'm exactly sold on this. I think the concept is cool. Her creepy, massive smile is really nice, too. I... I think it's very beautifully done. She has this huge seam line on the top and front of her hair which really bugs me considering her face is such a focal point. This is really spicy, no pun intended. The concept of it being propped up on like a frame is really awesome. I like that. Despite my feelings towards this show, I'm gonna have to keep my eye on this one. High School DXD. 6.5? What kind of weird, wonky scale is that? Why didn't you just go the 6 or just go the 7? I don't know. It's it's awkward. The figures look nice, but my being a fan of the monster aspect of this series, I always like to see the wings, the tail. Like, regardless, it's nice to see this series still getting quite a bit of love. I am absolutely not a fan of Overlord. It's just kind of dark for me. And I've watched everything that they've released of it so far because I flippin' love their Monster Girls. So many of their character designs are amazing too, and this is no exception. This looks flippin' awesome. This is really cool. I'm anxious to see it from multiple different angles. It's just, what I see here is very beautiful. Though the angles that I'm seeing, especially on her face here, are kind of weird. It looks like it's indented a little too much. I definitely need to see more pictures to have a better idea of the sculpt on that face. Uma Chan? I guess it's based off of an artist's artwork. A lot of figures doing that a lot in the past five, six years. This is really interesting. She's holding an egg. I don't know why. The hair that turns into like slime water is really unique and cool. I think that the sculpt work on the character is beautiful and that tail looks so intriguing. But that seam line, what the fudge, KD? What are you doing? This is terrible. Do not, like, the final product can't have a seam line on the tail. That is really not nice. It looks so off-putting right on the front. There's no better way you could have done this. I don't get it. Like, I understand that it's a long tail. It needs to click in somehow, but I feel like you must have been able to figure out a better way to do it than this. Because otherwise, I'm really digging this monster girl. Making an Oshinoko figure of I. You know, I feel flipping love this show so much. I'm a huge fan of Oshinoko. I've yet to pre-order any figure for her. I find they all look nice. I just, I don't know. I need something that really makes my head blow up like the show makes my head blow up and I'm not seeing it yet. Like this looks super cute. And a lot of the other figures I've seen that are coming out all look beautiful. I guess, I don't know. I don't know what I'm waiting for. Maybe like the show itself where they focus so much on the lies and the fake perfection. I'm just looking for something that's so perfect it just doesn't exist. I might have to lower my standards if I want to get an Oshinoko figure, which is saying a lot because so many of them are so beautiful. This looks really cute. Just as an illustration so far, I like how small and dainty it is and the bunny ears are nice. I'm curious if she has a poofy bunny tail underneath her dress. This one is very pretty. It's just, you know, illustrations are rough. You show me this drawing. Is the sculpt work and the paint job gonna be as nice? Especially the paint job. Everything on this drawing looks so warmer in color. If Kodakawa is able to pull this off with that kind of color scheme, I would be very impressed. A Nendoroid of Alisa. This is really cute. The eyes are beautiful but I can't collect Nendroids anymore. I refuse to buy them. I have quite a few already, and I'm just like, 
No, I'm out of space, I don't know where to put them, I kinda rather focus on scale figures, especially since that's what I like reviewing the most. So this is adorable for those of you that love Nendoroids. Congratulations? I feel like there's a lot of really nice ones coming out lately. Now we're into some Aniplex, and this is Fate Grand Order's Berserker Morgan. Oh, Aniplex. That is a very nice base plate, if I do say so myself. I mean, it's not really a plate, but that's not the point. This thing looks awesome. I can't wait to see it colored in. This is so beautiful. I love the Fate series so much, and it's really cool to see this. F*** you, Aniplex. I'm trying to make a video right now. I don't need to cry. Oh, this anime was rough. Nico Para definitely falls along the lines of Monster Girls, and I I've never watched the anime, never really followed it too much, but I do think that the two characters look kind of cute. This figure looks really pretty, but it's in grayscale, so you see all the edges, the details, the gorgeous sculpt work. It's the paint that's really gonna sell it, so I need to see this in paint. I'm kind of hoping they do something really cartoony that works with the overall design that they're going with here. Chocolat's head looks just a little bit too big, but you know, I, I gotta wait and see it in color. Ryu-chan. I have no idea what this is, but it does look cute. I like the base plate. It's beautiful, and I don't know. I need to wait and see. I don't really like the way that the shading or the lighting is coming across her face. This is one to wait on. Just watch, see how it evolves with the color and maybe the mass production version. Azerlane's unicorn. Is this her wedding dress? It looks like her wedding. It is her wedding dress. That's cute. That's really adorable. Ah, Blue Archive and their gorgeous designs. I don't play this game and I know nothing about it, but I flipping love a lot of things about it. And I'm kind of looking forward to the Weiss Schwarz set. So I don't know if I'm going to collect it yet. I just I say that. It's full of like Monster Girls. Now we're into some quest queue. This is Lum and she looks adorable. Her base looks nice. It looks like she's flying on top of the school. That's really cute. I love the hair. The face looks perfect. This is a really nice looking figure. Valkyria Chronicles 4. Okay. <laughs> I um, I don't think... I, this isn't necessarily for me. The hair looks absolutely beautiful, though, and I do like the uniform. It's just a little bit too sharp, pointy, and angular for my tastes when it comes to an anime figure, but it still looks really pretty. Kind of makes me think of, like, early 90s anime. Oh, Nitty 2D. I freaking love this artist. I mean, gosh, they made so many incredible designs over the years for so many amazing games. And now that they're just going off the rails and making their own stuff, this is awesome. I get that it's really over the top, but everything's a lot rounder and more my style. I really, really love that axe. That is just freaking awesome. The legs are beautiful, and I think it's cool how her cat tail is holding that beer. I think it looks nice, but I feel like everything Nitty 2D is really nice. He usually does all those big smiling round faces that I freaking love like crazy. It's cool. I'm curious if she'll come with like an alternate face or something. I'm not seeing a lot of seam lines. This is really, really well done. Press Q, excellent. And tanned skin. Thank you so much. I love it. I'd even go darker personally. It's just I like having a lot of variety, especially in my collection. So this is really cool. The one thing I would kind of dunk on is how awful the base is, but there's no guarantee that that's what the base is going to look like when it's actually coming out. I mean, these are all product shots at this point. So maybe we get lucky. Hopefully we get something cool. Blue Archives, Hinata. This looks beautiful. The hair, the flow. This is a very pretty figure. But considering the long list of figures that I've pre-ordered and that I'm watching, I need to see this thing in full color before really deciding if she's worth adding to my own collection. Awa Yuki. I guess this is another original artwork. I'm not too sure, but this looks interesting. I definitely need to see the colors on this, but the concept is really cool. Samurai Bride? That's, that's awesome. <laughs> Priest Subina by Artist Dish. This is <laughs> very spicy. I, uh, I don't know what to say. The face looks really cute. I like it. I think the whole pose and everything is gorgeous, but it is so spicy and everything is so tight on her. I don't know. I need to see this one colored. It's so rough looking at all of these grayscale ones because I find that when they're just a sculpt like this, I think they all look phenomenal. But all it takes is a weird color scheme to totally throw me off. So another one to watch. Ami Ami and Annie Gift doing a Koshino figure together? Hmm, it looks cute. I think that they've made a lot of really good figures so far. Like, just looking at them, like, in picture form, I think they all look really pretty. I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger on any of them. I guess it might have to do with the fact that I kind of hold off on seeing if we're not going to get these figures posing or doing things similar to the actual game. 
They're all their own renditions or poses based off of whatever this artist chose to take. So I don't think that they're bad. I just don't find them necessarily all amazing. I'm kind of like in the middle about it. This looks really cute. I can't wait to see her with the color. Snail Shell. Oh man, I love this company. Girl in the Box is a great figure. I absolutely love Wasp that they had released. And I have this other one and I'm forgetting the name right now, but it's just such a cool figure. I love this company but I don't really want to collect articulated figures. Despite that, this Zombina girl, Zombie Girl Grisha, looks really awesome. I love the bandages floating around her hand, like the sculpt work. This is just really cool. That dark eye that they colored in just for exposition on this figure for showing her off. But once I look at the illustration, I would have loved for this thing to not have any articulation. With that colder, darker gray looking bluish tint, this is such an awesome figure. The light blue for the mouth, the eye that's glowing, Snail Shell, please slow down on your articulated figures and make really nice statues. Your girl in the box is beautiful, just make more of these. I would love to see more of them. Your designs are creative, fun, and they're the monster girls that I freaking love with a little tint of creepy and all of your cute and spiciness. Like, yes, please. Oh my, oh my god, Apex, you're gonna, you're gonna destroy my wallet. This is so pretty. I... This is lovely. I don't, oh my gosh. Okay, so, you know, I, I just, just, I don't know what to say. I, this is very pretty. This is very spicy. It's super cute. The face is gorgeous on this. I love those horns so much. They're so imposing and they're so demonic and diabolical with the rest of this figure that feels so diabolically spicy. They pay attention to all those little details, like the pillows that we have around here look lovely. It looks kind of inflatable based off of the sheen that we see on the plastic, but I believe it's more of a futon. It looks extremely nice. I would love to own that futon in real life. That is quality right there. We get a couple of Manjus. I'm not much of a Manju person, but if this figure is anything like some past Azerlane figures, the Manjus will hopefully be removable without seeing any pegs or indentation that they go into. Please let this be a thing. I would also love if this figure could be propped up maybe on a bit of an angle. That'd be really nice. It would take up less space, feel kind of like one of those picture frame style figures. This is so gorgeous. I love her hair. Her hair looks so well sculpted. There's hardly any seam lines on any of what I'm looking at here. This is really, really high quality. The adornments on her horns are beautiful. It makes it feel like this is her. And when she wakes up in the morning, rather than just putting earrings on, she'll put them on her horns too. I love these kind of concepts. This is a cute Noshiro. I'm planning on getting the one where she's like at a maid cafe. I would flipping adore the one where she's on the sofa with her white frost icicle looking gown. I don't know, but it, that one's so pretty. This one here isn't so much my style, but she does look really cute. And I do like the original illustration of this quite a bit. Anchorage here is looking adorable. Personally, I still want regular Anchorage with rigging, which is, <laughs> I'm asking for so much. I like the original design a lot. This is really spicy. It's cute. I'm just more holding out for I guess her standard outfit. Bremerton, beautiful base. This is terrific. I'm not gonna get this kind of figure, but for all of you Bremerton fans out there, congratulations, this looks like a really nice figure. I try to make it a thing not to get more than one of each character for different types of figures because then it would never end. I don't wanna have a shelf that's dedicated to only Perseus or Formidable, but looking at this is making me want a shelf of only formidable. <laughs> really pretty. I love the fact that they're going to be using some real material in here, which I'm not usually a fan of, but depending on how it's colored in, this could look really nice. Especially since I just think the base is adorable, her hair is gorgeous, and just looking at this face sculpt, it's got those huge chubby cheeks, super rounded, soft eyes. This is formidable, and it is formidably adorable. <laughs> no, okay, this is, I'm, I'm excited about this. This is really cool. I really, really love Jersey and I didn't get the figure with the pole. I wanted it, but the space is a real issue for me. When a figure literally fills up like one full Detolf shelf, that I just, I just can't. But this figure looks very well contained. I love the clothing here. It's so fashionable. Having that top is like, 
so spicy. Her walking, pointing up, the smile that she's showing off, the one little bent ear, this is so her and it's gorgeous. I love the hair, the flow we get here. Those boots are made for her walking. I, uh, I'm, I'm probably gonna get this. And this Cheshire from the same set, get the heck out of here. What the heck? Ah, this is so cute. Cheshire was another figure that I was, I was absolutely going to pre-order her, but they didn't release her with her rigging, and so I passed completely on it. Her rigging gives her balance to her whole design, especially in the illustration. So if I'm gonna get something without rigging, this is really pretty. And to have, it almost feels like these honeycomb style bases can interconnect with one another. I would freaking love that. So, well, I guess we'll see. I mean, if I get Jersey and I get Cheshire here, it'd be really lovely to have them connect together. It's been a while since I got sister statues, and I think the concept is always really fun, providing it's not a detriment to not having one or the other. Zenless Zone Zero, a game that I don't think I'm ever going to play because I play Weathering Waves and I try not to overextend myself in what I'm into because I kind of go off the rails sometimes and I'm scared that I would spend too much money or too much time when I enjoy spending time making videos like this and I also really love working on my comic book. All this to say that this figure is so beautiful that she's a day one pre-order for me. Don't even know the character, but I freaking love that dark, toxic streetwear vibe that you get from her. That sword is flipping cool. I love the writing on the side of her leg, and those shoes are phenomenal. The base is a nice base. This is cool. This is a... Everything about this feels cool, and I can't wait to get this figure and review her. I'm, like, super excited about it. This guy looks super cool too. This in grayscale, I'm not a fan of her whatsoever, but I have seen some pictures of her in color and I really like it. So I'm going to wait on this and I guess I'll hold back my opinions on it once I get to see it a little more completed. As mentioned, I don't play this game and I know that this character has Eric energy all over it. So yeah, I'm most probably gonna get this one. This is really cool. I love the designs to the KDA figures quite a bit but I find the face looks a little too Western for me. I would have liked things to feel more anime, but that might change once it's colored in. This one's a lot more my style. I actually really love the wings on this character. It makes me think of something you'd see out of an old anime or manga called The Giver. It's very pretty, but again, it looks so Western. Like the pose, the clothing, everything. Uh, ah, Berengaria! This, this is Berengaria, right? Yeah, Unicorn Overlord. This, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I've been waiting for this, for them to start releasing tons of these Unicorn Overlord figures. I'm not a fan of the fact that her clothing is all ripped up because her armor is known for being extremely powerful and she went through a lot to be able to get it. I'm actually really bothered by the fact that they did this. But her face looks gorgeous and even the rest of this pose looks pretty cool. So I... I'm gonna wait, I'm gonna wait and see how they design and they make her, but this is the one character where they shouldn't be shredding up her clothing. It makes, like, no sense. Oh, yes! I guess I was kind of hoping it'd be the queen, but this is still really awesome. This character is freaking, I love the, I love the design. It's beautiful, so I'm excited to see how this turns out. A bit of a shame she's one on eight. I don't know if she's gonna be an action figure or not. I'm hoping it's a scale non-articulated figure, but this is really cool. Apex, if you make this figure colored like this, I will be buying this for sure. But if you give it regular skin tone color and it doesn't feel as neon and vibrant and we don't have like the hair with the yellow or the light green line work here and there for the shading or the purple underneath the strands, it's gonna be a hard pass for me. So I believe you can do it because you're an amazing company and this is very very beautiful so hopefully you can give this some sweet justice now we're gonna check out some amakumi figures starting off with alice from nike this is really cute i don't know what to say other than that i think it's adorable but i'm gonna be passing on it because i love this character in her outfit with the bunny ears it's just the design is super cool super cute super spicy it's got a bit of everything that i like in it and i freaking love that hot pink this figure takes away quite a bit from that but it does look really beautiful so if you're a fan of this character eh, you're eating well today this is this is good stuff i don't i don't understand what i'm looking at here but if that little one comes with the big one this is really cute this is really funny like for an overlord figure to give you a little chibi like this 
I don't understand the reference. This is this is awesome. This lo it looks really good. Amakumi, what are you doing? You know, you know, of course you know. We all know. It's been years since we've all known. The show's been done for a little while now, despite the manga, and it's a pretty great show. It's really fun. Like, the first season, I was kind of like, uh, in the middle about it, but the second season was just so amazing, and it made me really love everything about the series. So, like, where's her tail? How many figure companies have to keep making her and not giving her her tail? This is just like, okay, sure, Kobayashi, like, yeah, whatever. It's, this is a serious miss. Yeah, like a solid miss here. It looks gorgeous, but without the tail, this is a problem a lot of figure companies have. Oh, they just, like, I will spend the extra yen for the gosh darn tail as long as you're not charging me 30,000 yen for that tail. I'm a big fan of Wonderful Works. I've got quite a few figures, and this is so spicy. What the heck? I mean, she's not something that's gonna fit in my collection, but I definitely had to stop here to check it out. This artwork is super nice, and this is a very adorably spicy and romantic figure. This is really cute, especially with the facial expression that she's got going on and everything. Nothing here feels out of place. Ryza in particular is so good at taking something that should be just off the rails spice and just dousing that flame with so much cuteness and adorableness. They know what they're doing. <laughs> I like, I knew, I knew it was coming. So what to say, what to say. DCTR, I just don't know what to say. I I have one of their figures. It was one of the worst figure experiences I've ever had in my life. I really learned a lesson, and it's not to say that this figure is going to be a bad one, but she looks absolutely terrific in the pictures, much like the one that I had ordered. I know that I had just a bad situation, so it's just left a bad taste in my mouth. This figure looks really gorgeous. She has that kind of creepy monster factor that I usually really like, the tan skin is beautiful. The tears in her stockings look extremely well done. Even the back of her hair looks like it transforms into fins with all these little melted holes like acid or something. It's really nice. The base I find not good. I think that the base looks like it was very ambitious. It's just not particularly well executed. The sword should have probably gone directly into this ice. The ice cracks maybe should have been a little bit wider. The sword itself, the way it comes up and then bends downwards is weird. It almost feels like it's bending because of her own weight rather than something that would feel incredibly sharp and powerful. So I just have a lot of reservations for this figure in particular. I'm anxious to see how this will look when somebody in the community gets her and starts posting a ton of pictures, reviews, and things like that. I will not be reviewing this figure. I'm not going to be getting this figure. Though the third installment from this series of dragons by this company, I might actually bite the bullet and get it. I'm not a big overlord person, but this is cool. I can't wait to see this colored in. Sheltier is... I just like her. I think she's got that good mix of creepy and cute, and this is really unique. I need to see it colored in. This just looks like all of the, her base is going to be made out of blood. That's so cool. That's so dark stalkers, and I love it. So I'm just, I'm going to patiently wait over here. I don't own any Overload figures yet, and it's not to say that I won't be getting one. It's just, I need to find, like, the perfect one. <laughs> we'll see if that ever happens. I love these Miku creepy looking figures. They think they look beautiful, but the amount of space that that thing must take up, not to mention I'm not a fan of that base at all, but who knows, maybe closer to final product, it'll look nicer. This is awesome, creepy, I like it. It's just, I don't know, I feel like every time they're done coloring them in and everything, they just, I just don't find they look as nice as the gray sculptures. Maybe it's just the colors don't do it for me enough. They're not dirty, darker, ragged enough. I don't know, but I guess we'll see. I'll follow it like I do with all of them. Spirit Tail is a company I don't really know super well, but this is beautiful. This is really nice. They give you some great three-dimensional depth with their mouth too, so it looks extra creepy. The face, the knife, the whole bag going everywhere, and that base plate is really phenomenal. This is super cool. I'm not the biggest My Hero Academia person. I don't, like, I'm just, I'm just impartial about it. I don't really care. But there are some aspects I like, and a lot of that's the character designs and the way that they're drawn. It's just so round, and I think this looks so pretty. This is really creepy and really cool. 
This is my favorite character from Oshinoko, and I'm not feeling this figure. She doesn't look bad, she looks really cute. It's just not for me. I want something that kind of shows her, I guess, in her regular streetwear, maybe looking a little more imposing, because that's what I like about her. She works so hard to be able to get where she's at, and she's not willing to hold back or slow down anymore because of it, while treating people really well in the industry because of the lessons she's learned growing up. Amazing character development, amazing character. So I'm hoping that they make something of her that looks really good, gives her a lot of justice, but with that mentality in mind. As a pop star, this looks awesome, and I love the kind of cutout and decoupage that you get from this. Just her silhouette is really nice, though I do have reservations about how she's holding that microphone. This figure right here, Spirit Tail, this figure should not have that drawing pen in her hand. I mean, hold on. Yes, she should come with this drawing pen. If you could please make it so that that pen is removable, and then I could put my own pen, you've got yourself a sale. I will buy this thing so gosh darn fast that it won't make any sense, and I will absolutely use her to be able to hold my drawing pen for the rest of my life in drawing anime figures, lest another company do it and they use a character I really love. So this is amazing conceptually but you will win a lot of money from a lot of artists if you make her able to hold our own drawing pens this figure looks really interesting the horns are clearly what drag me in because they're so big and i love how gritty they look the sculpt to the figure is okay i need to see her colored in the base plate looks really nice i'm in the middle about it it's just that i really love the horns and the hat looks really nice too the hair is beautiful so i yeah i'm gonna keep an eye on this a, one of the best girls from My Hero Academia, the Frog Girl. This is cool. They keep making like these super dynamic ultimate poses for all their My Hero stuff. Like, I want something that's kind of simple and cute. If I could have something that kind of goes up and then she's sitting down and her legs would be like in a pond, or maybe if you made like a kind of like acrylic square where you see her whole body underwater and like the top of her head is kind of leaning out and there's like little li lily pads like floating around her. I want something that feels a little cuter and a little more like it's telling a story. This just seems like she's in the middle of fighting a battle like almost everything else. I think I'm asking for too much from my shonen figures. I, every time I see them, like, I just want a shonen that really works romance and that does it well and that's just like, it just, it just, Shonens aren't made for that. The action here is really nice. The figure looks really great. I'm curious to see what she looks like colored in, but this is going to be a pass for me. More Nikkei figures are always nice to see. Nikkei figures are always nice to see. Ugh. Wait, deja vu. Company is proof. I do want a Bell Dandy figure. Probably Erd if we're going to get real. Maybe Pjorth. But uh, I just hasn't, I haven't been impressed with a lot of these Oh my goddess figures. I guess they just don't get the love and the attention that they deserve due to the fact that this is a series coming right out of the 90s, so it's it's asking a lot. Kind of like how I really want a nice Record of Lodos War Deedlit figure. Wings coming out strong with a Musashi figure. This is a gorgeous figure. Too much space. It, she's gonna take up too much space for me. I can't get this, but I if I had an infinite amount of space, I would. This is really awesome. This looks so pretty. Look at all those swords and the shields. Oh, there's so much detail. It looks cool. The shoes, they're just like these ginormous shoes. Like this is, it's so pretty. I can't, I can't do it. It's gonna be too big. I won't have any place. I won't have place. The colors are going to heavily influence my getting this figure or not. I don't know what she's from. I think it's just based off of an illustrator named Suave and it looks beautiful. I think this is awesome Monster Girl material right here. I just need to see it colored in. It's very important to me. Like that's literally the make or break for this figure because this is 100% yes. I just, the coloring, my goodness. It makes such a difference for these figures. Oh, look at that. Helena in her swimsuit from Azure Lane. I just want a regular Helena with her rigging. Just a regular, normal one. I wouldn't mind her retrofit version or her regular. I just I just want a Helena. Helena is one of my favorites. She's such a good boat girl. Please just deliver me a regular Helena. This looks adorable. Lovely. I just, you know, it's a pass for me. I want the rigging. I like the robot aspect to these Azerlane characters. So when they, no pun intended, strip them of that and then put them in bathing suits or in other clothing, I do think it looks nice. I just am such a fan of the robotic aspect. Oh, wow. 
okay, I have been following just the illustration to this, and now that it's all in, like, sculpted, it looks absolutely beautiful. This is a lovely figure, and I am anxiously anticipating its release. I can't wait to see this thing in color. It looks so beautiful. Her umbrella looks incredible. Everything seems like it's gonna have that nice wooden effect to it. I love how big the ears are. They're so gorgeous. With her hair flowing in one direction and her tail flowing in the other one. And these adorable little flowers at the end. Ah, oh, it's so much personality. And they kind of match up with the flowers that she has on her hip and the ones that she has around her thigh. This figure is phenomenally beautiful, and I absolutely can't wait for her release. I think this is really cute. I don't know anything about Blue Archive, but this is... I, I just think it's adorable. I don't know if they're like robot girls or anything like that. They kind of strike me as that, but it looks like she's able to carry this suitcase with ease. I feel like maybe they could have put a little weight to it, or maybe some weight on her base and the sand that she's walking on, but I don't know. I don't know anything about this franchise, so I guess I can't really chime in too much on it. Another blue archive, and I don't know, again, the characters, but I just think this looks cool. That smug, oppressive face is awesome. The gun looks really cool. And even her work clothing with this lovely jacket that she has flowing almost like a cape behind her. This is nice. I need to see the base plate for this thing. I... I don't know why I think it's going to be the worst base plate ever, but Good Smile has really 50-50 with their base plates. You either get something that is a 10 on 10 or just absolute garbage. So who knows? I can't wait to see more of this. Max Factory's Alice Chan? We'll see. I mean, I know what they're going for here. Everything's ridiculously tight, but the tail looks kind of boring. I don't know. I find the whole figure looks like it's too much. It's telling you too many stories. Her staff is all over the place, showcasing a dice implying randomness, but at the same time, you have the balance, which usually implies being fair. And then when you look at a lot of the rest of what she's got going on here, it doesn't necessarily call back to that staff, with the exception of maybe the dice that are in her ears. I don't know, I need to see it colored in, and because I don't know this character, it's just, I feel like it's just a little too much going on all at once. It's crazy how the colors can really bring a figure and a whole story all together. This is lovely. I'm curious to see what it's going to look like colored in. I'm a big fan of the Etsy Rise series, and I don't have a statue of this character. I always thought that Leela looked nice, so she's a fun monster girl. I don't know. Gotta wait to see it. I kind of want one with her in her regular costume, but a regular costume, like, I'm a bit on the fence about its design. I don't know. I have to see this thing finished before I can make, like, a real opinion on it. But from what I just see here, it does look like it's really well sculpted. The Giver! That's so funny because I was talking about it earlier today and it's so rare that I mention it at all. This is like one of the first things that got me into anime back in the early 90s, 80s. And having a gigantic Giver is pretty cool. I don't own Unit 1 and I would love to. I actually have a Unit 2, but from the OAV, so it's like the female version. Feels kind of Monster Girlish. that's why I picked it up but I would have liked to get this one. That turquoisey blue one is really beautiful. What the heck? I, like, okay, so now we have her in a situation where she wants you to eat her tail. So she shouldn't necessarily have her tail. I mean, isn't that how it usually goes? I get that she can grow it back fairly quickly, but that's not the point. I'm just a little disappointed because she has her tail here. This figure looks like it'd be a decent Toru. This could have been the joke. The fact that they almost never put a tail on her, and when they do, it's like super expensive. So in this case, they're like, guess what? We didn't put the tail on this one, but you know why. But they didn't. They, like, it kind of like right over their head and we have the tail here. I really like Toru so I'm kind of sad I don't have a figure of her yet. I'm just I haven't been happy with any of the ones they've come out with and the few that I really liked were so overpriced that I'm just I'm not buying that. Elma! I want a lovely Elma with tail and everything but this is really cute. I like this quite a bit. The base looks adorable. The ice cream and everything like this is a joke figure and it looks adorable like it it's <laughs> this is good. I, I'm curious to see how it's gonna look colored in but this is really nice. Oh wow okay well this is a nice Leela right here. My goodness that base is Atsuri Ariza all over. She looks fantastic and even the pose this is literally like kind of what I was saying I wanted from that My Hero Academia figure earlier where I wanted something that felt kind of more almost romantic and you really get that here. It looks like she's sitting back just looking up at the stars and she's all alone and this has pretty all over it. I'm 
yeah, this is gorgeous. I look forward to this one. The ballerina aesthetic that we get from this is so beautiful. I already have a 2B figure and I love it. It's amazing. It's so good. And I might get a second one just because of how much I love this. I love the pose. I love the sword. I love the base. This is so gorgeous. Taiga Toradora, one of my favorite animes of all time. I, It's just such a good rom-com. And if you haven't seen it yet, it's absolutely worth your time. The first couple of episodes, you're not gonna like this character that much. And then she does grow on you because the character development is extremely well written in this series. And when you're done watching the show, be absolutely sure to stay till after the credits because that last 30 second scene or one minute scene at the end of the credits of the last episode will literally complete the whole series. If you don't see that, you kind of leave angry and annoyed. It, it looks lovely. I would like it if she was wearing her school uniform doing this and she looked beat up. Like she just finished beating the crap out of a upperclassman and she's here standing proud and tall like she might have won that fight. It looks like her. It's just, I would have preferred it to be a scene from the actual anime. But the amount of creativity thrown into this is well executed and I do think it looks really nice. Another robot girl from Nikkei? My goodness, I feel like I have this massive Azerlane collection and a decent Fate collection but it's only a matter of time. All of a sudden, I'm gonna have all sorts of Nikkei ones, and this figure is most probably gonna fit in there. I love robot girls, and they give her like this snake-looking tail. This is creepy and cool, and I just, I think it looks really nice. <laughs> This is so spicy. I can't condone getting this figure and the one with her in the futon. I would have to pick. I know that there's actually two versions to this. Her with her mouth open and without her jacket. And then the jacket with the mouth closed. I can only imagine that this might actually have a replacement head for it. I'm not a fan of the base. I think it looks really boring, but the figure herself is really beautiful. And so I don't know. I'm going to wait and see, but that one with her in the bed is absolutely fantastic. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm just going to be watching it from a distance for a little while and see how she evolves. Azerlane Cheshire, and this is the singing one. Oh my goodness, this is so beautiful. What I would have loved to have seen Alice Glint do with their rune, this is lovely. It's just an illustration, but she looks like a cute little cowgirl with actual cow ears, cow tail, and a gun strapped to her hip. This is cool. I like the face, I like the expression. She has little horns on her head. I'm really excited to see this thing coming soon. I'm, let, yeah, okay, hopefully that's true. I want to see this thing sculpted and painted. It looks lovely. There's a big chance I'm probably going to pick this thing up from Girls Frontline. Now we're going to get into a couple of figure companies that might be a little bit spicier, so I may have to censor a couple of things here and there, depending. But otherwise, keep in mind that my channel is not for children. So let's get on with it. Neon Max, this looks extremely cute. I. I like it. I think it's really pretty. I, of course, try to focus on things that are a little more monstery or robot-y, you know, have that kind of element to it, but it looks like such a lovely design. <laughs> now we're talking. All right, so this looks terrific. The tail coming down and coiling around her sword is a beautiful touch because it gives it such good personality. The twirling horns going outwards are nice. The eye patch, her little shushing or did I do something wrong finger is beautiful here. The eye looks like it's gonna be terrific. All the little details all across this figure up until even her high heels with the spikes coming off the end are lovely. So make or break is gonna be the color, the sculpt here and design is really fabulous. Space Mogra is a fairly new company at this point in time, but what they're coming out with is creepy and awesome. And I am living for this figure. Look at those tails, that is like, some Schwarzweldian nightmare stuff going on there. This is so cool. I love it. I love the ears too and how they really look like they're coming out of her head and they're a part of her making this little heart, but it's not perfect. It's kind of crooked and it the face. Oh, this is a nice figure. I'm very curious to see other angles to this. I'm just wondering how everything looks along the back and even on the sides with some of the cutoffs and the intersections of the different parts of her that they stuck together because I'm not seeing a lot of mold or sculpt lines here, and I'm sure they're there, I'm just not seeing it properly. And the base, the base is so good here. This sells what they're trying to sell, and it does it very well. This figure is by a company called Limland, and her name is Hikari. 
I like it so far. I think the wings are really nice. I like the personality that they gave them. The outfit is cute and the hair looks beautiful. I get a lot of demonic and darker creatures that go bump in the night when it comes to my anime figures. I feel like the anime figure world just doesn't have enough of them that are my style. This is definitely in the right direction. So I guess we'll see. I'm definitely gonna follow this statue's progression. Golden Head coming out with Prince Henrik. This is nice. I really like this quite a bit. She doesn't have her rigging, which bugs the heck out of me. Hopefully it's a secondary purchase or they'll release something with it. Her sculpt work here is phenomenal. It She really looks like the illustration. So, you know, if they pull off the coloring, this thing is gonna be a 10 on 10 for me. I love this. It's, I, I want to place her next to her sister, Prince Eugen. Please come out with her rigging. It's important. But that aside, she looks so terrific that even without the rigging, it's, I might actually pull the trigger on her. And finally, after all this time, we get an update to Alice Glintz, Massachusetts. Oh, why? First, why are you covering up her face? Is it because you did an awful job with the 3D render? I love Massachusetts. This is a beautiful costume for her where usually I like to get the rigging. This is one that I would definitely be fine without it, but I want her desk. She has a mirror. She's got like a whole bunch of stuff in the background. It sells this character quite a bit to me. My problem is that this is an Alice Glint figure and all I can tell you about Alice Glint is that they overcharge for everything and their quality is not necessarily the best based off of what I've seen off of many figure pictures and one that I own myself. So, you know, this says one on seven scale. Is it really going to be one on seven or is she going to seem too small or too big? And I would have liked to see all the extra things in the back. It's very important because it literally sets the mood for this figure. So just having her sitting on some random space age futuristic looking chair, I'm, I'm not digging a lot of this. I'll wait and see. I'm still going to follow its progression, but I, I don't know. Prisma Wing is a company I'm not particularly familiar with, but this girl's frontline figure looks amazing. Look at that base. What the heck? Even the yellow that we have chunked off from like, it looks like it's sectioned off or pulled out of like whatever piece of land it came out of. This is such a beautiful base plate and the robot figure design in itself is just really phenomenal. Like I am, uh, <laughs> I think that this is a definite buy for me. I don't mind seeing metallic pins holding things up. I'd rather everything be up and right and looking good for years to come than something just drooping over and falling apart, breaking, or leaning, which is awful. I know some of you out there have trouble with it, but I personally just see past it and I always just look at the figure without even noticing it for real. Kami is my favorite Street Fighter character of all time and I freaking love this costume, but Prime One Studios is a figure company I'm personally just not particularly fond of. I've seen a lot of their figures over the years. They are very good, but I always find that the faces seem slightly off. You're looking at this demonstration model and everything on here is like all the T's are lined and all the I's are dotted. But the second you get an actual figure in hand, I've seen quite a few reviews and there's a lot of them I'm just not a fan of, especially considering the large amount of money that these figures cost. I mean, you're paying for something that's a really big, beautiful showpiece. And it's probably going in the middle of your dinner table or right when somebody walks into your home, it's like the first thing they're gonna see. They're imposing, they're hefty, they're gorgeous but the paint jobs on them are just something that I'm not always happy with. I don't own a Kami figure yet, and I really want one. For years I've wanted one, and I don't think that this is going to be it. But who knows, as she's coming out, maybe she just ends up being perfect. This is a really cool looking figure. And that base plate is absolutely gorgeous. I love the extra body that they give you here too. So cool. I need to see other people do reviews on this figure to decide if I'm willing to pull the trigger on her myself. This is a figure by a company called Ascendia. Her name is Amethyst by artist Daphne or Daphne. I think this looks really cute. There's a lot that I really love here. The horns, the angelic wings, that creepy spine looking tail with the hair hanging off of it. It's very spicy. I just don't like the fact that they put like a baton or something between her legs. That bugs me so much. Hobby Sakura here hitting out of the park with Rupee. This looks awesome, but Rupee's not my kind of character. I don't play the game, so I don't know much about them, but I do think that this looks really nice. I like the base and how they put tons of money under her feet. That is really good. I'm more interested in the next one. I've been waiting for them to release this figure and she looks fantastic. I do find that her legs look a little bit more separated than I would have liked, 
but everything else looks so nice and this might just be the angle and the lighting that we're seeing her on her base looks really interesting blood like effect or clouds or anything that she's standing on underneath the acrylic circular base it makes it so that her boring acrylic base isn't as boring as usual but it's not like she's standing on a heap load of money it would have been cool if they did something unique like that despite this she does look like she takes up very little space and she does very well with the space she's using i'm very excited for this figure i'm pretty sure i'm gonna get this <laughs> this is uh this is really unique this is by a company called ensoon and her name is demon no nos no nos is right this is definitely a lolly character but i think concept is super adorable like this is really cute and i like how the wings aren't attached to her but they're connecting two different parts of her like a piece of her hair on one side and a piece of her hair on the other with the little horns. This is really an adorable figure. Wave, thank you so much for giving us a Kobayashi Dragon Maid character that actually resembles the character very well. This is creepy. Right off the bat, this character's design is extremely, I would say, <laughs> debatably not the best. But this does look like her. They did a great job with this figure. Look at those hands. Oh, I love them. The claws are fantastic. She has the tail that's got the sectioning off, so they didn't cut that out in this one. Her hair actually has a little anime highlights, which I love to see. She has those cute little swirly horns. They look good. The ears, the gradient that we get in her hair is very pretty too. The face is perfect. This is so messed up, creepy. The eyes are scary. The teeth are scary. This is a character that looks like she's trying to show off in a way to attract someone, but she doesn't know how to do it, and she's absolutely gonna eat you. She wants to eat you. She's just like, is this what you humans are into? So you can get up close, and then I can just, you know, eat that face of yours? I want to see more of her, more angles. Medicos Entertainment. Yes. Thank you. I am going to put a light underneath this figure and she is going to glow and pop the way she's supposed to. The fact that we get these beautiful stars and gradients underneath her hair. Wow, this is something. Like, this is a really spicy figure, but my gosh, does it ever look imposing and well done. Her skin looks like it's a bit shinier, which would make sense with all the water that's everywhere. And even those flowers where they put the lighter highlights on the inside of the petals. Unbelievable. Yes, please. Thank you very much. I will see you in like, what, a year or so? I'm looking forward to her. And this is a 100% yes based off of just the coloring. I mean, we've got like a reddish looking demon girl and a darker skin looking elf. This is freaking perfect. I love the base. If we can get a lovely base paint like that, both figures in one. I don't know if they're going to do connecting base plates or if they're going to force you to get one whole thing, but even the eyes and the horns, like this is so creepy and so pretty and I love this and I want more monster creatures like this. So this is definitely in a direction I enjoy to see and I can't wait to see these figures when they're actually sculpted because I'm pretty confident that the sculpt is going to be really nice. It's really all about those colors. Eldora Model is a company I don't really know anything about but my goodness, does this look adorable. Like that base plate's really nice. This isn't really my style of character, but I love the paintwork so much on this. This is a little bit more my style. If they come with these like little magazine looking books too, that's amazing. I love this character's tail. It's like a chopped off tip too. So it really looks like it flays outwards. The stockings are gorgeous. Her jacket is really lovely. For a second, I thought she was holding a cigarette. It's weird, but I think I would have liked that. Like, I'm not really a cigarette smoking type of person, but it would have added a little bit of personality to someone that looks so picture perfect for a magazine here. But it turns out she smokes too, so she's really a completely different person than what you think. My Oshinoko influence. Wait a sec. It's a garage kit? Ah, oh, get out of here. Oh, no, I'm not. I don't have time. Well, I definitely have the patience and I could probably learn, but I don't have the time for this. It's just, this is adorable. Well done, artist that did this. Otaku Toys is a company that makes figures. What a name. I don't know what other figures they've come out with over the years, but this figure of Isabel from Nikkei is the robotics look good and the human parts look nice. I just, I need to see this finished up. I'm not particularly a fan of the strand that's going across the top right of her head and then coming down. It's clearly like sectioned on piece there, but when it's colored in and it's actually sculpted, it might not pop out as much as it does here. Other than that, this figure looks phenomenal. Somebody called Howling Star and Robot 
Up build are working together on this. She seems to come with a secondary body for X reasons. I don't know why. Maybe it's to remove the star piece at the top of her head. It says one on 10 scale action figure. Her name is Ashti Ismail. I just like things that look some sort of pseudo religious space opera. This is cool. I think it looks really beautiful. I'm curious to see how it's going to be colored in. And the last figure I'm checking out today is this one right here. This is Robot Build and I think this figure looks amazing. If she is a hardcore robot where all the joints look robotic and it doesn't bother me too much because it almost looks like a statue due to it being robotic, this is such a lovely concept and design. And for the most part, that's all the figures that caught my eye in this year's Wonder Festival 2024 Summer Edition. It's exciting to see a lot of this awesome stuff coming out soon. And for a fan of Monster Girls and Robot Gals, I'm so hyped for all this epic, epic designs and concepts coming out in the future. It's gonna be amazing. And there's a few of them that I can't wait to get my hands on and do some awesome in-depth reviews to because it's, it's fun. I love doing it and so I, I just look forward to it. Hopefully you had fun watching this video today. Are there certain figures that you saw that you were like, oh, I am getting that for sure? Because I have quite a few that my wallet, it's, I don't even have it. Like it, it ran off, it's gone. It's like, no, screw you, Eric. I, I can't live with you anymore. <laughs> if you like my video just a little bit, it doesn't cost much to collect that like. Dust off that subscribe. <laughs> and correctly place that notification bell. It doesn't cost much, and it goes a crazy long way at helping support my channel. Have an amazing rest of your day, and I'll see you next time. Bye!